Hello everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we will be talking and analyzing NetEase. NetEase is a Chinese company and when looking at the price, the first thing that comes to mind is wow, this is not a stock that only goes down like all the other Chinese stocks such as Alibaba and Tencent. Tencent and Alibaba have been down very very much this year and only been going down and NetEase not so much. So today we will be looking into this company and basically answering the question is this a good buy at this point so before we start just a quick disclaimer this is my portfolio and as you can see tencent and alibaba are in there and netease is not or at least not yet so just so you know so let's start by looking at the business and seeing what does the business exactly on the screen you can see a 2019 q4 q4 revenue breakdown don't don't look at the the numbers because of course they are rather old but the breakdown is very much still still remains true to this day so we see that most of the revenue of netease comes through their games so we'll be looking a little bit more in depth later what games they own but a lot of it is games and then they also have a music segment and some other innovative businesses and then they have a little bit of an english dictionary which also brings Bring some some of the revenue but mostly it is a gaming business and you also have some streaming services so uh, some sort of spotify and tencent in terms of games combined and we're looking more in depth in what this company really is this is the breakdown so once again the percentages might not be entirely correct because it's a two-year-old picture but nonetheless they still own these businesses and it still remains true to this day that online games is very much responsible for 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 all the revenue and especially the mobile for, uh, online games now interestingly enough they have both self-developed games and licensed games so what does this does this mean the self-developed games is just made in-house and these games are usually not known in europe or the us so these are really chinese games right if you're a chinese viewer or perhaps an asian viewer you might recognize some of the games in europe and the us probably not so much nonetheless when we look at the licensed games these are games we recognize world of warcraft hearthstone minecraft uh, and what they basically do is they they take a license from the the creator of the of the of the of the game such as Microsoft for Minecraft and uh, Blizzard for World of Warcraft and Hearthstone pay them a little bit and then make a Chinese version of that very much the same game. So you still have Hearthstone and Minecraft in China, but these are very much games made for China alone by this business by NetEase. So that's the main difference. Then they have some other businesses too, innovative businesses, as you can see on the screen, uh, such as the Cloud Music, which is quite important, uh, the Spotify, which we talked about earlier, and then also we have some learning services. So if you just look at this at this business, it might, well, first you might think, wow, this is like Tencent, but if you want to look in American businesses and compare them to this Chinese business, it's like a little bit of a Microsoft, Spotify, and then like a gaming business combined. So that's basically what NetEase is and does. So without further ado, let's get into the numbers. Let's see what this business brings in and what the bottom line is, etc. But before we do that, let's look at the price, right? Because how does, has the stock performed over the past year, over the past five years, and especially over the past 10 years, these are, of course, still quite important measures. So as we can see, NetEase has been an incredible stock and has been doing incredibly well. It is still down from its peak, but nonetheless, it's going up there very, very fast. And when I first saw the graph, it reminded me a little bit of JD.com, right? JD.com right now is also pushing uh, towards the, the peak that they had before to their all-time high, so to speak, while Alibaba and Tencent are definitely not doing anything of a kind yet. So very much this, this business is uh, looking very, very strong. And the reason why it's still going strong and not in a, in a big slum like uh, Tencent and Alibaba are is basically due to the fact that the political pressure on this business is just way, way, way less. And we'll get into that later on. But nonetheless, the, the, the pressure on this business is just nothing compared to the pressure that we see on Alibaba and Tencent. But without further ado, let's get into the numbers because, of course, the numbers is what makes a business. So first, when we look at the revenues, revenues are looking looking quite strong. Perhaps an average growth of like 23, 24, 25 percent uh, on the whole, quite strong. And that's something you want to see. This is still a fast growing business, and that is quite important. But what, what's perhaps even more important are the gross margins. This business has 
great margins. And that is always something to be excited about. And yeah, when we look at the at the numbers are on the whole, they look quite good. As you can see here, diluted EPS is, however, a little bit of a shocker because when you look at the, the top line, the top line is only be going up, only uh, going up, 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 up. And then when we look at the net income, it actually struggled a little bit. And that is, of course, concerning if a business cannot put the revenue into numbers, it is quite concerning. Nonetheless, this is a fast growing business. So a lot has to do with investments. A lot has to do with uh, perhaps projects that are not profitable yet, acquisitions that are not profitable yet, but might be in the future. On the whole, with a growing business, it's definitely not that bad. But still, this is not as clear as, let's say, Alibaba, Tencent. These are businesses that only go up, 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 up in terms of net income, in terms of revenue. Alibaba a little bit less so, but especially Tencent. And we see this a little bit less with NetEase. Nonetheless, when looking at the, the balance sheet, the balance sheet still looks strong. They have some healthy cash reserves. And what I like about this business too is that the balance sheet is strong. Like I said before, sometimes with these Chinese companies, the balance sheets are quite strong. Not always. Real estate, banks, not that strong. Uh, but these businesses, Alibaba, NetEase, Tencent, fast-growing businesses, they usually have a tendency to not take on too much debt. And I like that in a business. I like to sleep well at night. And I know when we have so much equity, so much assets and just little liabilities that the chance of going bankrupt is just incredibly, incredibly small. And so that's always good. Even if times are bad, even if economic times are bad, even if the company were, make to, were to make losses in, for a few years, the balance sheet can easily support it with an equity of over 80 and liabilities of only 48 it's a very very healthy difference so when looking at the cash flow statement once again the net income we see struggling a little bit on the whole of course the line is still going up right i mean it's not a bad business but it's still going up depreciation and amortization costs are up which is always good for the free cash flow and on that on the whole that's the most important for this business so now that we take a look, took a look at the numbers, which were looking quite good, we can take a look at the valuation. In other words, what do you pay for this business? Later in this video, we'll do a very in-depth calculation with what we can expect to earn on this stock in the upcoming five years. But right now, we'll just look at what is the price that we pay, right? Because we know what the business does right now. We know what the business brings in. What exactly do we pay for this stock? And the answer is you pay around 23 times normalized earnings and 21 times free cash flow per share. These numbers are not shocking. Of course, you still pay a premium. You still pay for that growth, but it's definitely not more. It's, I think, cheaper at this point than Facebook. It is uh, more expensive than Alibaba, but Alibaba comes with more political risk and it's cheaper than Tencent. On a whole, you pay for the growth and I think that is very worthwhile. I think that is logical. I think that's what, what is supposed to happen. And so I'm not shocked by this price too much. Uh, nonetheless, like I said before, we will dive into that more at the, at the end of this video and really see what does this mean for the business. Uh, but on the whole, it's looking very, very good. What I also like about this business is the fact that they pay a dividend. We'll go into the dividend a little bit later because it's quite an interesting and unstable dividend. But they do pay out profits and this is always something to like because even if the, if it were, were to go wrong with the business, you would earn your money back already through the dividends. And so I think dividends are always a good way, one way to control risk, why? Right? Because you have less risk because you get these payments. On the other hand, to to make sure that you always have some cash flow in your portfolio and can always dive into new investment opportunities. So once again, these are the numbers. The revenue grew of, on average 18%, so a little bit lower than I uh, than I first expected, but still this is good. And bear in mind that there are two uh, upcoming years in this calculation. So we look at five years in the past, in two years in the future based on anal uh, analysts expectations now these expectations of course of course always take them with a pinch of salt nonetheless they can give an idea of where the business will go and so the average comes out at 17.7 percent a year on the whole not bad and the ebit grew with 8.1 percent which is definitely definitely something to be excited about once again like i said the dividend per share always nice to see very unstable, but nonetheless, the dividend has been growing over the uh, past five years, and the expectations are that it will continue to be growing. 
And it is just great that they return value to their shareholders. So here are the dividends. This is the net ease dividend history. And the dividend yield right now is perhaps not extremely spectacular. But the point is, it is so extremely, extremely unpredictable. The good thing is, it is a business that grows and it does pay out dividends. It is something to like. Also, these dividends will grow. And as we can see, sometimes they pay out these enormous cash dividends. And these are always, always great. So these are, I think, extra dividends. They just have cash and they don't know what to do with it. And then they give it to their shareholders. Now, these things are just very, very useful and very good to bump up the return on this stock so on the whole definitely watch out for these big bumps uh, but nonetheless you will get some stable cash flow from this not stable it's unpredictable but you will get stable in the in the terms of that they pay out every quarter dividends in your portfolio one thing you always want to be looking out for when buying a Chinese stock, especially in these times, is of course the risk of the government, the risk of politics in general. So right here we have an article, NetEase gains on report China may resume game approval soon. This is also why the stock jumped 5.2% only in one day. Basically what happened is that Chinese regulators halted new games approval for three months and right now they might start back up. Now, what does this mean? This means that every new game that NetEase want to release needs to be stalled. They cannot be released. They don't get permission to release the game. This is, of course, troublesome because you can't release new games and so you can't bring in new revenue. Nonetheless, this has only been for three weeks, uh, three months, and there are risks or there are rumors that, that it comes back. And so the risk on, on this whole issue, I would say, is rather short term. It is like Alibaba. It is like Tencent. Yes, the government right now is somewhat critical on these big businesses, including NetE, um, uh, NetEase, even though this business has a lot less trouble with the government than other businesses have. For example, Alibaba. But still, it is something to bear in mind. And I think... On the whole, I would not worry too much about this. If you really like the business and you think, wow, in the upcoming five to 10 years, it's going to do great. Right now might be a great buying opportunity. Of course, the most important part of this video probably is the cash flow analysis. And why? Because we want to be able to predict the cash flows in the upcoming years so that we can actually see if this is a good buy or not. So looking on the screen, here are all the numbers. So first of all, the tax rate, 23%. This is very comparable to Alibaba. Tencent and JD pay a lot lower rate, uh, but NetEase and Alibaba for some reason pay much more. Uh, right now, they pay a little bit more taxes than they did in the past, so this is a rather conservative tax rate. Still, they pay this at this point, and in the past, it has only been a little bit lower, like 18, 19, 20%. So perhaps you'll, you'll win a little bit on this in the upcoming uh, years. Perhaps the business might pay a little bit less. But nonetheless, I think this is a very, very good rate. The discount rate, once again, the discount rate means what return do you as an investor want on your stock? We want to learn with this analysis. We want to predict, hey, is this stock going to outperform? That's basically all we want to know. In the upcoming five years, is this going to bring me more than an S&P 500 will? And so I like to be conservative. So I put it on 15% and not, let's say, 10% is or average of the S&P. I want to be a little bit conservative so that if, let's say, the tax rate goes up beyond that something that we could have foreseen, that we still have this margin of safety and that we will still outperform by this purchase. So that's why it's at 15%. If you look at the enterprise EBITDA value, it's really not that of an expensive business if you look at it. It is a growing business, but not super, super expensive. I wouldn't call it extremely cheap either, right? Alibaba is very cheap right now, but it's definitely, NetEase is definitely not as expensive as a Tencent is, for example. So there's definitely some value there. Then here are just some, some things that I just took from the balance sheet and the cash flow statements, shares outstanding, debt, cash, capex. And the grow EBIT, this is the historical average. Now, um, we can play around a little bit with this rate. Of course, it's tough to predict. Is it going to be 12% in the future? Is it going to be less in the future? When we look at expectations and when we look at historical averages, 8% is the most rational rate to go by. We already, calc uh, we already calculated for some margin of safety in the discount rate. So I would just keep this at 8%, assume that this business will just keep doing what it has been doing in the past 
this is if if this is realistic of course that depends so th that's basically the big big decision you need to make do you believe this is realistic yes or no once again history and analysts are with you but perhaps you know something that analysts don't. So let me know in the comments what you think about this, right? Do you think this is realistic? Do you think Netis is going to slow down? Do you think it might even accelerate? Let me know. Nonetheless, this is a realistic rate at this point, in my opinion. So we filled in all the numbers, and this is the the calculation, so to speak. So the, here are all the numbers. You can pause the video and look into them if you want to. But this is, of course, where most of you are interested in. So this is the intrinsic value of the stock. This basically means this is going to be the market cap in so many years. This is not 2026. This should be a little bit. Yeah, it's 2025, 2026. So probably a year early than that. The market cap will be around this rate. And so the equity value per share is a little bit higher than what it is right now. In other words, it is likely that this stock will outperform in the upcoming five years. Are we 100% sure? Not entirely, but let's play around with the numbers a little bit because, for example, let's say slow, the growth slows down. You still have a very decent margin. But, of course, if you, let's say, outperform, let's say you, you put 50%. It's, of course, quite a lot, right? Because the EBIT growth needs to double almost. But let's say they have some good acquisitions. On the whole, you can only be, be happy about this stock. Now, Let's say we go back to the 8% and we say we want a very, very good return of, let's say, 25%. In that case, it might still be a good buy, but it gets smaller, right? The margin of safety gets a lot smaller. So on the whole, if I need to sum this business up, I would say it definitely has some Tencent characteristics in terms of portfolio of the businesses, but it definitely does not have the same price as Tencent. It's a little bit cheaper. I do not own this stock yet. Um, and because I like Alibaba and Tencent so much, I'll probably not buy into this stock anytime soon, but I can definitely see why people want to buy into this stock. It's definitely not a bad stock, especially if you look at the numbers. It's a highly profitable business, and this will continue to do so, and especially what's so good about this business, because in the beginning of the video, we saw that the net income is not entirely stable. Nonetheless, they create a lot of free cash flow, and they give this back to the shareholders. That's something that I really, really like about this business, especially China, you know, because the stock is quite volatile. You know, you get these th fights with the government, and you... It's always nice to have some cash flow, some stable cash flow coming out of the, the company. Every quarter you'll receive a dividend. Of course, you don't know how big it will be. Uh, nonetheless, it is good to, to take this into consideration. So that was all for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what companies you want to see uh, me analyze. And then I'll see you in the next one.